Hello again, glad to hear you. What you see behind me is the Sydney Opera House, one of the world's most famous landmark buildings. You may be wondering what the hell is going on behind me here. We've got music, we've got red carpet, we've got celebs incoming very shortly. This is the world premiere of the new Star Trek movie and I'm going to be on that red carpet having a chat to some of the stars as they wander by. But if I miss them it doesn't matter because tomorrow morning I've got some interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews with the director and like four or five of the cast. I can't remember off the top of my head now. I'm so burnt out coming off Supernova and everything. I'm tired. But I am so thoroughly excited to be here tonight to be one of the first in the world to see the new Star Trek movie. Now, you get to see the red carpet stuff, you get to see the interviews, but you're going to have to wait for the review because I'm under embargo. You're going to have to wait like a couple of weeks after you see this before I can actually publish my review. So I'm going to have to be real careful about what I say. I can tell you that I've seen the movie. I can tell you that I've talked to the stars. I can show you the interviews, but I can't tell you what I thought of the film yet. So. I'm going to pack up my camera, I'm going to get on the red carpet, then I'm going to go see this movie, and with any luck, it's going to blow my mind and not leave me in tears. But, you know, how hard is it to screw up Star Trek? I'm going to find out. Hey, that's a bit harsh. I shouldn't end like that. <laughs> Whatever. Star Trek, world premiere. I'm here. I'm excited. I'm fun. I'm rambling. I'm overtired. I'm burnt out. I'm ending this bit to camera right now. God, I'm so professional. It hurts sometimes. Hey Brian, how are you doing? Now Very you good. produced the movie. I did. Um, 25 words or less. What does Star Trek mean to you? Uh, it means a big undertaking. Uh, it means no sleep for a long time, and it means um, a, a project that we're absurdly excited about. Now, were there any particular challenges in facing what could be a huge sort of fan outcry if you get, you know, the tiniest thing wrong? There are billions of st hardcore Star Trek fans out there that would just have your skin. Uh, yes, that was a perpetual uh, challenge and on our, on, our, on our backs and we just felt like, you know, sooner or later either the franchise would go away, which is where it was when we got involved, or somebody else would come along and take on, take on the challenge and we figured... We were pretty, pretty confident you got it right? Uh, I'm very happy with the film, yes. Yeah, so, and so far, all the, the, the handful of people who have seen it uh, back in the States uh, have all responded exactly as we had hoped, which is if you were a Star Trek fan, it's the Star Trek film you've been waiting for, and if you know nothing about this series, which I was one of those people, it was you, you discover a whole new universe. Right, so this is something that even people unfamiliar with Star Trek completely can just jump on board with? Particularly, it's made for those people. It's really for people, and, and, and what we realized is that unlike Star Wars, which had a beginning, and you meet Luke, and you know he has his aunt and uncle, and he, they die, and he goes off into the great beyond, um, Star Trek never had those origins. And what we were excited about was really showing Kirk and Spock and how they came together and giving uh, an entrance uh, or an entryway for fans to go see this movie, or new, a new audience, I should say. So you've got I'm really gibberish. It's really it's it's because of my accent. So there are, there are plans for this to, is this sort of relaunching a whole new world of Star Trek? God willing. If, uh, if uh, the fans like it, we will hopefully be able to do more because we just had an incredible time making it. Excellent. Well, I'll let you know once I've seen it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You haven't seen it yet? Not yet. Just about uh, to. All right. Good. To. Oh, you're coming in tonight? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Good, good. <laughs> 93,000 from YouTube. My audience comprises mainly of nerds in their entirety. What's your favorite thing about Star Trek? I think it was um, predominantly just, you know, the characters. To me, it was always a, a show that was about, you know, a group of very um, different people getting together and, you know, as a team and working together. Um, and I think the characters always outweighed the drama. You know, I think that's what its strength was and why William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy are such icons, because they were such strong, um, affectionate characters. And what was your favourite thing about making the movie? Um... Prosthetic makeup was good fun, you know. Yeah. Disappearing into a into a character was good fun. Um, I think overall, just the spirit of it. I mean, it's not often you get to work on a film where there's just so much, you know, goodwill and so much, you know, good energy towards it, want, people wanting it to be good and it being made by someone who's so, you know, obsessed with <laughs> ensuring that that's the case. It's very that's interesting great. about the makeup. Most actors sort of tolerate it for the part. Um, how long did you spend in the chair getting made up? Um, three hours. Uh, putting it on and a couple hours taking it off. Thank you very much. JJ Abrams, lovely to meet you, mate. Pleasure to see you. Pleasure, pleasure. Now, making a movie like this, huge challenge because there are so many hardcore Star Trek fans out there. Are you scared about the reaction? Are you confident? Uh, I'm a combination of, uh, you know, excited for them to see it and also terrified that they're going to find 
inconsistencies and things that will drive him crazy. So I'm, I'm praying that we did them proud. And uh, what was the, the most challenging thing about sort of bringing Star Trek, I mean, you, you're kind of rebooting it a little bit, bringing it into the now and giving a bit more pizzazz. What was the, the most challenging part about that? I think the hardest part, uh, not the hardest part, but the, the thing that was most important to me was making sure that as much as possible you believed it, because it's crazy, it's Star Trek. So on the one hand, it's like, oh, it's going to be this fantasy science fiction film. But it, we had to approach it with a commitment to it being legitimate and making it feel not just real and vital, but also relevant for today's audiences. It's a very different context, you know, now than it was 43 years ago. Do you have a personal favorite character? It's funny, at the beginning of, uh, of doing this, if you'd asked me a favorite character, I would have said I didn't have one because I didn't really connect with any of them, you know, yet. And now I don't have one because I love them all. Um, I, I really don't. I have to say that uh, you know each of these characters. I feel like, as in the film, they're all critical, and you can't remove any one of them. The family of the Enterprise requires all of them. Um, so it's sort of like I feel a little bit like a, a father. You can't really choose a, a favorite son or daughter. Now, a couple of years ago, you went on stage at Comic Con, and one of the first things you said was, "You've always been more of a Star Wars fan than a Star Trek." Has that changed? No, I mean, it's, it, I always have been. I mean, having worked on this movie, I feel like there's some equity uh, for me. So you're bringing what you love about Star Wars into the Trek universe? Uh, it's not, what's, that's not so much what I love about Star Wars. I, I tried to bring what I love about movies to the Star Wars, uh, um, to the Star Trek with, you know, uh, universe. But the Star Wars universe, like, you know, to me, it, it was so massively impactful to me and I think my generation that it, 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 you gotta, it's, it, it's, it's hard to disconnect from, you know, uh, that the impact of that kind of, that classic sort of storytelling. It was, it was such a, uh, an important movie for, you know, for me and I, I didn't want to impose that on Trek. Uh, and so at the same time, you know, you can look at it and say, well, there are things that are, there's a father issue and there's like, you know, good versus evil, but like any good story is going to have certain elements and, uh, and yet I don't think that, that this is a Star Wars imposed upon Star Trek film. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. You. How are you? I'm How good, you? thanks. How are you? Lucky. Hi. Hi. I have to ask, yes. stepping into one of the one, one of the fan favorite character and stepping into the very big shoes of Leonard Nimoy, how intimidating is that? Leonard's only a size nine, <laughs> so no, I'm kidding. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I had the great advantage of, of getting to meet and work with Leonard and uh, that was probably one of the most exciting parts of this experience, you know, aside from working with JJ and the rest of the cast and being a part of this really exciting thing, but uh, I feel most grateful, most grateful. Did you practice and were you trained on the eyebrow cocking? What? <laughs> a little bit? I don't know. Uh, you know, it's uh, the eyebrows, it, they, they, it goes with the territory, so sure. Um, no, just you got nothing? I you blanked? You got nothing? This is your moment! What do you got? Oh, Bruce panicked! Bruce panicked! Bruce panicked. <laughs> you guys good? All right. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Have a great night. And that, my enterprising, trek-loving viewers, was a trekky treat, a mere sampling. Beaming up over the course of the next week is a significant stash of Star Trek treasure, including my full review on the movie and interviews with Carl Urban, who plays the irrepressible Dr. Leonard Bones McCoy, John Cho, who plays Sulu, one of my personal favorites, J.J. Abrams, the director of the movie, and Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto, the bromantic interstellar force that is Captain James T. Kirk and the very logical Spock. So stay tuned, there's so much more good Trek stuff to come. Catch you next time.